In this video, we are going to look at a problem where a list data structure might be uh, useful. So here's the problem description. We want to prompt the user to enter in grades until a negative grade is entered. And then after all the grades are entered, calculate the average grade after dropping the highest and lowest. So I need to enter in a bunch of grades. I don't know how many grades are going to be entered. After all of the grades are entered, I can try to calculate the results. Um, I want to store a, a data set, a bunch of values, but I don't know how many values I need. This is where a list can come into play. So let's try to set up this problem. First of all, we will put a little uh, end to our application. I'll say console.readkey and we'll say console.write. Uh, press a key to exit. Press any key to exit. All right. To get started here, I have to prompt the user multiple times until a negative grade is entered. I don't know how many grades are going to be entered, so I'm going to set up a sentinel controlled loop. And so that sentinel control loop might look something like this. I'm going to say while some condition, conditional variable is not equal to an exit condition, I want to do some work. And then I want to update the conditional variable. This is our pattern for building sentinel controlled loops. Well, I want to keep looping. So this can this this is the condition that is going to define what we want to do, what condition are we going to keep doing the work? Well, I'm going to keep doing the work while positive grades are entered. So I need to build a condition here that, that is saying while the condition conditional variable is not negative. Well, our conditional variable is grade. We are dealing with grades here while the grade is not negative. Well, another way of saying the grade is not negative is we can say, well, the grade is positive. And so to create an, an expression where the grades are positive, or to test whether the grades are positive, I can say grade is greater than or equal to zero. So here's our conditional expression for our sentinel controlled loop. While that grade is positive, I want to do something. Well, the thing I want to do is I want to save these grades. So I want to, I want to add them to a list. So we need to kind of take a step back and build a list data structure to store these grades in. So list data structure will look something like this. I'm going to make a list. We will say our grades are type double. And I'm going to call this list my grade list. And set it equal to a new list of type double. There we go. So we've built an empty list. Now to have access to this list data type, I need to have the using system.collections.generic namespace at the top of my program. This list class exists in the system.collection.generic namespace. All right. So going back to Sentinel control loops, I have a, I have a location to put the values. Now I have a loop to start, keep looping until uh, grades are no longer positive. Grade is my conditional variable. I need to initialize my conditional variable. Initialize the conditional variable before I can test it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a prompt. I'm going to prompt for a grade here. The work I'm going to do is add this grade to a list. So I'm going to say grade list dot add my grade. So I'm going to add the grade to the list. The update is going to be asking the user to give me a new grade. I need to update my grade. So I'm going to update with a prompt again. So let's fill in these prompts now. So prompt fiend for a grade, I'm going to create a double variable called grade. I'm going to create a Boolean variable called parse OK. And now I'm going to build my initial prompt. How about console.write, enter a grade. And then I'm going to follow it with my try parse syntax. Parse OK is equal to double dot try parse, console dot read line, store the result into my grade variable. Now this is our initial prompt, I have to verify that this parse is good or not. What if the user entered in ABC instead of a grade? So my check logic is going to look something like this. While that parse OK is not equal to true, or while the parse fails, what do I want to do? I want to reprompt. So I'm going to take my initial prompt, copy it into my re 
my uh, while loop here and maybe add a little sentence that says invalid value try again enter in the next grade so here is a pr protected numeric prompt I have now initialized my conditional variable I've built my loop condition I'm doing the work which is adding the, the grade to my list now I need to prompt for the next grade and I can just copy my initialization prompt and dump it into my sentinel controlled uh, application loop here and now we should be good so what I've done here is we have we are building the loop that is going to allow us to fill this list with grades okay so now the list is filled let's think about part two part two says after all grades are entered calculate the average grade after dropping the highest and lowest well I have two ways to solve this problem one way is I can calculate the average if I know the sum of all the grades and what I know what the maximum value is and the minimum value I can take the sum subtract the high and the low and then divide it by the number of grades minus two because we're subtracting the high and the low and so here I have four accumulators a sum a maximum and an account so if I loop through this list I've just created and use accumulators to find the sum, the max, the min, and the count, then I should be good to go. Another way to solve this problem is I could just take my list, sort it from high to low, or low to high, and then just, just average the inner indexes, you know, index 1, 2, 3, instead of index 0, 1, 2, until the end. And so I'm going to show you kind of what we will solve this equation or this, this problem using both of these equations. So first of all, let's do method A, where I want to loop through and find the, the sum and the max and the min. To loop over my list, I could use the syntax as follows. For int i is equal to 0, i is less than my, what did I name my list? Grade list. i is less than grade list dot count i plus plus. So this is a counter controlled loop where the counter is tied to the index of the list. The index always starts at zero, and it's going to go up to, but not including, this isn't less than or equal to, it's going to go up to, but not including, the size of the list. Okay? Now, inside this for loop, if I say grade list at index i, this represents each grade in the list. So this is the value that, that this is the variable that holds when i is zero, grade list at index 0 holds the first grade in the list. When um, i is 1, we hold the next grade in the list, and so on. All right. So one, one thing I could do is, here, let's pull this out. I'm going to say double value is equal to my grade list at index i. As I go through this list, I'm going to grab the grade that's stored in this index, just store it in a temporary variable value. OK, now I can use this value variable for my accumulator work. Well, let's set up some accumulators. I need a sum, a max, a min, and a count here. So let's set up some accumulators. To set up a count accumulator, I'm going to say int count and initialize it to zero. To set up a sum accumulator, since these are double values, I'm going to make my sum accumulator a double. Double sum equal to zero. To initialize my max accumulator, I'm going to say double max is equal to int or double dot min value. I want to initialize my max accumulator low because we want to find values higher than it. Then to set up my min accumulator, I'm going to initialize that to double dot max value. Initialize my minimum accumulator high because we want to find values lower. All right, now let's implement our accumulator logic. Accumulators should be initialized before the loop in which they are going to be processed. We display the results afterwards. So let's, let's make this happen. Well, if I want to count all the values in this list, I could just use the dot count um, property, but I'm just going to show you the manual way. So I'm just going to say count plus plus. So here we increment the counter on each uh, new value in the list. To sum, I'm going to say sum plus equals value, which is the same syntax as sum is equal to the old sum plus the value. 
value is each is the grade I just pulled out of the the list so I'm going to grab each value add it to my sum to find a max I can say well if the value I'm testing is bigger than my max is greater than my max then this max is this value I'm assigning the value into my max accumulator basically if I find a new higher value then I'm saving it and then to find my minimum accumulator I can say well if my value is less than my min well then I'm gonna save that value min equals value if I find a value that's lower than my minimum save it okay now that I have my accumulator logic set up I can calculate the average I can say double average is equal to my sum minus my max minus my min divided by my count minus 2 since sum is a double, this expression is going to be a double divided by an int. Double divided by int gives me a double. We're okay here. Now, one place where this could give us trouble is, well, what if the, the user only entered in one value or two values, right? If I have 2 minus 2 on the denominator, that could give us an error. I can't divide by 0. So maybe I'm going to put a little logic here that says, well, if the count is greater than 2, then I will calculate my average as so and print the results say console dot right line average grade is and we'll spit that out there otherwise maybe we can say tell the user too few grades have been entered so too few grades entered all right so this approach, all we did was loop through each element in our list, pull, pull out each grade, save it in a variable, do our basic accumulator work, calculate the results. Now another way we could do this is sums and max and mins and counts of the whole data set. I can use link queries or link methods. So we're going to say a link approach. And I don't even have to loop through my results in this case. The link library is also usually included on the Windows uh, when you, Visual Studio when you build a new console app. So using system.link, this namespace includes some extra methods that extend uh, uh, some, it, the list class is extended to include some accumulator methods. And so what I can do is I could say, all right, we'll say double average two is equal to my, my grade list dot sum minus my grade list dot max minus my grade list dot min and we can divide it by my grade list dot count minus two and so here I can just grab that sum and the max and the min directly from my list now this only works if I'm trying to find the accumulators across the entire data set Okay, if I have to build conditions, like if I only want to average, you know, even number of grades or something like that, then this, this approach wouldn't work. All right. And again, we would want to make sure we only do this if we have at least two grades. So we will print both of these averages under the case that we have at least two grades entered. Average grade through length link query is this insert the average to okay I hope that makes sense for method B we're going to take a different approach here we've entered in a bunch of grades right we entered in all the grades we filled our list now we're going to say well if I only want to average the inner number of grades why don't I sort my list and then just set up a loop to loop from the first index to almost the last index. So let's do that. To sort my grades list, I can just say grades list dot sort. Now we have a sorted list. Now I'm, now I'm going to set up a counter control loop that loops through all the grades, not including the first and last index. So maybe that looks something like this. For int i is equal to 1, instead of starting at 0, I'm going to start at 1. While i is less than my grade list dot count minus one, I'm going to go up to, but not including the second to last index. 
and then increment by ones. Okay, and then I just want to average when I inside this loop grade list at index i. This represents each grade in the list. So if I want to set up a find the average of this, I need a count and a sum. So I'm going to say int count two is equal to zero. Um, double sum two is equal to zero. And then we will say inside this loop we will count each grade and then I will say sum two plus equals grade list at index i. Add each grade. But we're only adding the grades starting at index one going up to the second to last index. And then to display the results we can say well if my count two is greater than two then I can print out console.writeline average is this is using the sorting approach. The average should be my sum two divided by my count two. All right, let's test this out and see if it works. All right, enter a grade. Let's try not entering in enough grades. So I'm going to say uh, 56, and then we will say negative one, and we get too few grades entered. Great. And I didn't have an else condition on this one. All right, we're going to enter a grade. Now we will enter some real grades. All right, so here I entered a 99 that I'm throwing away, a 45 that I'm throwing away. And we see the average of the, hopefully, the ones with without the high and low. Well, all three approaches agree, so I think we are we are doing a pretty good job. All right, I hope this helps kind of understand how we might use lists and accumulators and do some work with data inside a list.